Hi everyone, Bandana here, and today we're going to take a look at Stalker Gamma. Stalker Gamma is a modular mod pack for Anomaly, which is a repackaging of all the original Stalker games as a mod pack with additional mods. So this is a massive mod pack on top of a massive mod pack. A little bit convoluted, we'll get there. But basically, it completely changes the original game. Admittedly, I don't know the original game well. You might be like me coming into this having played maybe a little bit of the original Stalker. I played about four hours. I actually own them but never really played them. And then you might be someone who's played the original Stalker. You might have played Anomaly. You, you know, you might have done all of that and then they're coming into this. Basically, it changes the game up completely is what I understand. But this is me coming into Gamma with a fresh start. And I've been playing for about a week now, really enjoying it. It is a lot of fun. It takes a little bit of getting your head around stuff. And I didn't really find any video sort of covering the basics. So for those of you who have no idea what you're doing, this will be helpful for you. For those of you coming into this, having played the original Stalker, hopefully it'll be helpful. But it's basically to go over the basics of getting started in the game. And then we'll have a spoiler warning. And then we'll start on my other character which has already progressed a bit, and we can talk about some of the more advanced features, which you may or may not want to know about. But that will be talking about some of the crafting and things like that. It is deep, so I'll be brushing over some stuff. This won't be a super detailed video, because each portion of this, you could spend half an hour talking about easily, if not longer. So we're going to have to brush over things fairly quickly. So let's hit start new game. There's loads of options on this screen. And it meant absolutely nothing to me because I hadn't really played the game. And you might be in the same position, but let me give you some brief information on the character stuff. So these are your relations. Yellow is neutral, red is bad. You can change your faction. The base faction is your loners or free stalkers, which have this badge here. However, you can change your faction to a bandit, for example, who are technically the bad guys. They are friendly or neutral with freedom and the mercenaries, but everybody else is your enemy. Not the best way to go. You can go for Clear Sky, who have a few more friendly faces, but are still enemies of the military bandits and monolith. Monolith. You'll meet them at some point. Not very nice. Bandits are everywhere. Not very nice. Military, shoot everybody on sight. Basically, assume that everyone is going to shoot you on sight unless they're one of your friendly or neutral factions. You can also take duty, who are a bit all over the place as well. Uh, the military you can be, but obviously anyone is your enemy, except the ecologists, who are basically part of the government anyway. You can choose monolith as well, but... We'll get into that later. My advice is go with the free stalkers. It's what the game is supposed to be, you know, played as. It was the original point of the game. And, you know, you're a loner or free stalker. You've got friends. You start in places where you'll have friends. You should be okay. You can choose a portrait if you want. Doesn't really matter. And then you choose a random location to start. Or you choose a specific location. Factory complex, I don't know it, I've not actually visited there yet, and I also haven't been to the lodging house in Rostock. My advice is go to the rookie village in Corden. If you are a new player to the franchise, if you are someone who hasn't played in a long time, rookie village is where you want to go, it's where there are some tutorial missions. It doesn't tell you this when you get there, but it is the case, and we'll hop in and start the game and I will show you those tutorial missions, or at least how to get them started. So we're going to go to the rookie village. Now, I would then jump into the inventory, but we're going to change some of the settings, which will change all of this stuff. So the first thing to say is there are different difficulties, and you can play on any difficulty you'd like. We've been playing on medium, and rather than tourist, we have been playing on survivalist. Which is, you know, a bit here and there and everywhere. It's obviously a bit brutal. Um compared to playing on the other modes, but, you know, Survivalist is the harder difficulty, if you will. But it's good fun. So I'll leave it at that. It does reduce the points you have, obviously, quite significantly. And this may or may not be an issue once you come to be putting the load out, but you will find more stuff in-game, always remember that. We also turned off Accessible Zones. This is basically 
you know there are lots of levels and areas in the game that you can't necessarily get to easily and there are secret hidden paths if you tick that it means they're all visible immediately and they're all accessible if you take that off it means you have to unlock them that's completely up to you we turned it off so you have to explore and find it yourself again just how the original game was trying to be played and then there is the campfire mode which you can turn on or not but it seems to be a default in the game that you can only save the game at campfires so you know that's just the way this this mod pack is made there are obviously story mode i would leave that on because you want to have the story experience unless you've played through it before when then it doesn't matter i suppose uh iron man mode not for me but if you fancy it go for it and there's other bits like survival mode which is like a zombie survival mode etc etc but this is the settings i went with and that my friends and i have been playing on so the next thing is your inventory now you get a nice selection of bits and pieces it's all stuff you're going to need so i wouldn't change any of that what you've got to choose is your weapons so you've got various weapons here you've got an sks you've got a slightly more automatic weapon you've got a little smg which is nine millimeter you've got various shotguns you've got another smg there nine mil you've also got a double barrel shotgun down here and you've got various pistols you only have 1100 points here so you're going to want to choose sparingly my advice and not everyone will agree is to go with a shotgun at the start i went with this custom sawn off shotgun trz34 the bookshot is very good against the creatures and slugs are very good at a little bit longer range against people so that's a good option and you will find all of this ammo on bodies in game and you can buy it at the vendors early game in terms of the other stuff you will find nine millimeter you will find anything that is russian ammo so nine millimeter you'll find you'll find 762 etc etc the reality is though here nine mil isn't going to do as much damage as a shotgun 20 damage per hit at least a shotgun blast to the face is going to do 180 so my advice is to take the son off shotgun you can take a different variation of that shotgun if you're on an easier mode the long version but you don't have that option here but i'd take the sawn off it's double barreled it's really good but if you want something else take it it really doesn't matter i'd also take this mask because you're going to need a respirator there is loads of radiation in pockets in the zone and you can't see it you just enter it your screen goes a bit fuzzy you get the ticking from the gaga counter you're already in there getting radiated so just take it it's it's much easier and it'll save your life now with so few points life is going to become difficult you have to make a choice between armor you can either take a leather jacket which is super cheap you know it's 50 points that's not bad or you take the better armor which is a really good armor for this level but it's 500 points or you take a load of meds now slight spoiler you can fairly early if you're willing to go venturing get some armor that's about as equivalent to this as a reward so that's a slight spoiler i'm not going to tell you where however if you stick around till after the spoiler warning bit i will tell you how to get that armor and therefore you don't necessarily need to get the sunrise stalker suit right now you can wait the other thing is armor in game is much easier to repair than guns so with that in mind technically you could also just wait till you find some in game and then repair it the repairing and building and crafting is very very difficult and convoluted and will probably need its own video but i'll try and cover the basics after the spoiler warning when i'm on my other character because i can show you it because i have the equipment to do it however for the moment what i'm going to suggest is if you are playing on this mode and you are not going to 
you know, look at the spoiler bit. Take the Sunrise Stalker suit. If you are going to look at the spoiler bit, or you're feeling brave, go with the leather jacket. That means you've got 600 points left. And then we move on to what I would consider the most important stuff on this screen. When you are in the zone, medications are ridiculously expensive. Like, obscenely so. You start with 5,000 ruples. That is nothing. One of these med kits in the zone, these first aid kits, will cost you over 3,000. I think the starting amount you will pay is 3,750. So you are going to need to take meds with you because they are so cheap here compared to in-game. I'm going to quickly run through what some of these little symbols mean. So a first aid kit will do you for anti-radiation, which is at the bottom there. You see radiation minus 20 millisieverts per second, and it lasts 34 seconds. You will also get health restoration at plus 3% over those 34 seconds. So you get plus 3% health for 34 seconds. That will heal you so much. You really need these, and they are expensive in-game. They have two uses each. So you know what? I would just take all of them. There's 75 points here. Just take them all. It is truly worth it. You're giving yourself such a head start. Obviously, try not to take damage in game, but you know, you will you will really be thankful you took them. These things also have the ability of first aid, which is the yellow writing there. You'll see first aid for head, torso, arms, and legs. That is only temporary. All yellow first aid healing is temporary. To make that permanent, you need one of these white hearts. So you've got fentanyl, you've got yadulin, and you've got other items here. This is a antibiotics kit, which post heals the whole body. So white heart means post heal. Post heal means permanent healing to your appendages or body parts. When we go back to the first aid kit, the health restoration is your overall health pool. So you have an overall health pool to worry about and you have all of your appendages and limbs and everything else. So you have two areas of health to worry about or many areas if you consider all of the arms, legs and everything, their individual parts. So my advice is while you're here, take some of these as well. These are 25 points here. Again, they're over a thousand in game. And the fentanyl is even better. And again, it is really expensive in game. So just take all of that. That leaves you 100 points. But it is well worth taking all of those meds right now. You could also take the tourniquets. So, one other thing you have to think about is this little blood symbol, which is bleeding. If you get shot, you obviously have a wound and you will be bleeding. If you get clawed, you will be bleeding. You have to stem the bleeding. Tourniquets will do this and will completely first aid your arms and legs. Bandages will do this and they will first aid your torso, arms and legs. So you already have some bandages that will stem bleeding. Tourniquets are better at it, but right now I would stick with your bandages because you will find more bandages you could take tourniquets if you want. They are better than bandages in some ways, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Quickly going over other stuff, you can see here there is a small glucose shot which gives you food and stamina recovery. You've got the little radiation symbol, which obviously means that it removes radiation. You've got a little chemical symbol next to the white heart here, which is chemical resistance. And you also have items which have psych resistance, which means that, you know, there is psychic damage in the game. Not too many spoilers there. You might be expecting this. One other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is up here, which is a lead line metal container. Now, a lead line metal container is something you will need to store artifacts that are radioactive. You get one of these free from one of the tutorial missions, so don't bother. You'll find loads of them in game. They're not too expensive. Honestly, I don't think it's worth the 100 points that it costs here. 
Now, water is very helpful in game. So you could take some of this mineral water at 35 points a piece. I would actually just grab those because in game, the water is fairly expensive. My preference is actually these little water bottles of purified water because they're fairly cheap in game. And they get three shots each. I can't remember if these get many shots, but for 35 points right now, it's, it's worth having some extra water so you don't have to worry about it for a while. I'd also spend 25 points on this, which is a field cooking kit. These are over two grand in game, um, but they have eight uses each and you can cook anything in the game. So these are well worth it. So you will find when you kill an animal or a creature, you can cook their meat. It will give you radiation, but you should be able to account for that. And drinking water will also reduce radiation. So it's worth cooking some meat, eating the meat, and then drinking some water. And it all balances out and you'll, you know, fill up your water and fill up your food. Other than that, unless you're going on the easier survival modes, don't worry about other stuff. You've got everything you need there to get you started. Armor wise, yes, this armor is amazing compared to just a leather jacket, but the meds are really important and I regretted not taking meds last time. So just keep that in mind. I really struggled for a while walking around on low health all the time because I couldn't afford meds. But you will, you will learn as you go. Simple as that. So there you go. I'll leave that screen on for a second. That's all the settings we've gone with. That's all the additional items we've taken. And let's hit start. So we are starting in the rookie village once it loads. And I'm just going to give you the very basics of where to pick up missions and things like that. And then we will hop into my other character and that's when we will have the spoiler warning and move on. And talk a little bit about the crafting and also about how to get that better armor early doors. So here we go. This is the start of the game. Everything always looks a bit weird in this building. I always feel a bit zoomed out funny it's it's a little bit strange and it's a very foggy day so you can't really see very much but uh, they have improved the graphics massively compared to what it once was let's just quickly open our inventory you'll see none of our equipment is there except our shotgun which is already equipped let's stick our backpack in there just to increase our carry weight we're going to stick our body armor on and we're going to pop that up there which is our respirator so we're already well equipped now everything will take damage over time but again we will talk about that after the spoiler but uh, needless to say you will gradually find things that will help you repair and build new items so if we click tab okay we won't click tab because we need to put that in so inventory that's something i forgot this is your pda you put it in this slot here I don't know why it's not there by default, but put that there. And then you've also got a detector. You have various detector options. One of the mods that is possibly going to be added to Gamma soon is actually one way you can just assign hotkeys and switch them whenever. But stick your echo detector in there because it's going to be something you use more than anything else. You can hear some shooting in the distance there. Now, if I hit tab, that will now bring up the PDA. If we look at the PDA, you'll see we have a map. We can zoom right out. And at the moment, we can't see a lot. We can see lots of ways to travel. And these are the ones that are available to us. But there are secret ones that we don't have access to yet. But they go to various other zones. And we're not going to worry about that at the moment. We are in Cordon, which is here. And we are starting down here at the Rookie Village. Now we can zoom back in and have a quick look. You notice there are a few people marked on the map. And you'll see important character, trader, important character, and bed. And you'll also see a trader symbol down here. But basically, things that are important here are the campfire. Because you'll need to come to the campfire to save. If you come to the campfire, you hit F5 and you can save. Campfires are also where you can right-click and click Use on your cooking kit. And when you actually have meat on you you'll be able to cook stuff. You can also 
cook meat with water and things, which reduces the amount of radiation you get for them, but it does use water. I wouldn't advise doing that. Just cook the meat as it is and take the radiation hit. It will clear. It's not that bad in this version of the game. Now, in terms of other things to be aware of, well, let's take the starting mission and we'll talk about it then. So, this is Fnatic. He will give you tutorial missions. You speak to him. If I zoom out and just go back, actually, for a second, I just want to show you this. If you miss a message, they will all be available here. So, you see that we actually had that message from Fnatic when we talked to him there. But there's nothing here to say go and talk to people in particular except Sidovich, which is the trader downstairs. We talk to this guy and he will give us our starting stuff. So you know, I could use a little help, I'm ready to learn. And he gives you training day boar hunting. And he even gives you some bookshot for your gun. Okay? And he can say, tell me about yourself, and he'll tell you who he is, yada yada yada. And then we click buy, and then he will actually now take us to the mission with him. So if I hit tab, and we look at the map, you see we are being told that training day boar hunting is over here. So where this little flashing white symbol is. So we can go that way. And he will follow us. And he will actually do some of the shooting with us. Now, he shouldn't be able to die, hopefully. He should have, like, plot armor. Because he will go on to give us more training. But we'll quickly do this, just to demonstrate how this works. He won't uh, rush. He will just take his time. If you hit 3, you'll be able to pull out your own gun. If you hit Y on the keyboard, assuming you have a British keyboard, or an American one, I assume is the same. If you hit Y, it will be Z, I assume, on a German keyboard. You can choose your different shells. We're going to be choosing just the standard bookshot, because that's all we have. But you can get slugs and armor-piercing slugs for dealing with people. Obviously, bookshot in the face will still kill people. So, it's a little bit annoying that it's foggy because we can't see too much, but we're going to head over this way. Something I need to mention straight away for those of you who've never played this game before is that in this game you will be using these little bolts and throwing them a lot at when you see these areas. So, this is an anomaly, and anomalies hurt, and they all do different things, they all look different, and some of them are completely invisible and don't actually respond to you throwing things into them. So it's just something to bear in mind. Now, he's ran off to fight. Very annoyingly. There he is. He's already He already engaged what we were going to engage and killed them. And I can't even see where he's killed them. I was going to loot them. That's quite annoying. He kind of got ahead of us. But if we talk to him now... We say, that was crazy, what now? He wants us to go to the anomalous area. So now he's going to follow us elsewhere. I would have liked to have found... Oh, there is one boar here, look. So if we click F and chop its body, you'll notice we get some meat. And we also get some fangs. So we can loot all of those. It's worth holding on to all of the body parts because people will want them and things like that. Another thing I just want to demonstrate quickly is if you look in this tent, there might be a box. There isn't, but if you check tents and things, sometimes there are items in there, boxes to break, or other stashes and things. I can't see any more boars, but we can see, you can just see in the distance there, there's a little bit of sparkling and popping on the screen. That's another one of those areas to be aware of. If we go this way, you'll see that I'm starting to get radiation and it's going up very quickly because my armor is not as good as I had in the previous game. So we run away from that area because it will do us a lot of damage. Radiation will slowly clear, but if you stand in it for a long time, you will take a lot of radiation damage. And we're going to head over this way. Oh, enemies. Various types of enemies. That was a dog that we just killed. And this is a flesh. Some spoilers perhaps. But you'll see these straight away anyway. They're just an early part of the game. But we can... 
loot all of these for the food. It's well yeah, worth doing it. Blind dogs and flesh. There's a little camp there which we could go and check. I won't do it right now. I just want to get this tutorial mission out of the way. Just to show you that you do get a uh, another item. Uh, these guys will all defend this area when necessary. So if you, you know, the monsters or zombies or people that are hostile come to this area, they will help defend it. They will fight. Obviously, events in this game can be really random. And you can get in a situation where all of these guys will die. And the camp is overrun by someone else. Uh, they shouldn't kill the traders or the guys with plot armor. So, in that sense, it should never truly get overtaken. And some of the guys with plot armor have very nice weapons. So, should be okay. So, this is our little anomalous area. I will just point that out to you on the map. I'm sorry I know where it is, but you can see there. This is where it wants us to go to. So... There are various areas with loads of anomalies, and these areas usually have pre-placed items that you will want to collect. Artifacts being one of those things, which can be radioactive or not, and potentially other things as well. So he should now be telling us that this is updated. There we go. So speak to him again. Here we go. What do I need to do now? So he now wants us to get the jellyfish artifact and click show me. And he's now given us an echo detector, but we already had one to be fair. And we can click not bad. And then he will give us a lead line container. And there you go. We wanted a lead line container because we need to put the jellyfish in it. Now, what he does say is to be aware of the fact that there's junk in here as well. But we want the artifact specifically. So don't get distracted by the irradiated junk, such as irradiated bread. Uh, that's to throw you off. He does at least warn you here. But if you haven't read it all, that's what you have to be aware of. This container sure is heavy. Well, of course it is. It is lead lined and he's given us some vodka to deal with the radiation. So anything else we need to be aware of? He's given us some more bolts because you don't want to run out of bolts. But my advice is turn the off. So if you go into the settings, there is an option. I'll show you that quickly after we finish talking to this guy to basically give you unlimited bolts because let's be honest if you were in this situation in real life you would bend down pick up any old piece of dirt or stone whatever else and throw it in front of you to see if there's normally there you wouldn't worry about having bolts and only being having a limited amount of them and then having to go and pick them up that's just silly so you can also ask if there's any other work he wants done and he will tell you about other jobs so one job for example is he wants a battery artifact just say i'll do it and you can do it later, you can do it anytime. I think there's a limit to the number of jobs you can take from any one person, but you can take loads of jobs from loads of different people. So just have it as a backup. Eventually you'll find one and give it to him, and he will really appreciate it and give you a load of money. So you can even say, is there anything else, but he doesn't have anything else now. So we'll say, see you later. And I'll just quickly hit escape and go into settings. Now there are loads of settings in this game. Loads and loads of settings, because obviously there are many, many mods. Don't worry about most of them. You can go through them and have a look at them at your own leisure. Some of them are to do with the difficulty, but we've already set the difficulty stuff, so we're not going to worry about that. The only thing we're going to change is the amount of bolts we get. And I can't remember which one it's on. There we go. So if you go down to progression and right at the bottom, you can see limited amount of bolts. That is enabled. We're going to unenable that because it's ridiculous. You can leave it on if you want. I think it's ridiculous. And just click apply. And that will only affect this game that you are playing right now. It won't affect your other saves. So, you know, maybe you want to do one game where that's the case and one game where it's not. Now, he won't move from there. He's going to hang around now or even walk back towards the main camp. Because he doesn't want to come in here and get irradiated. Which is probably sensible for him. We're going to hit five. And I'm just going to show you, five is our bolts. I'm just going to show you where we can walk and where we can't walk. So this looks safe to walk down here between all of these things. We're also going to hit capital lock on the keyboard, which is going to bring out our detector. And as we get closer, 
to what we're looking for it's going to beat more and more and we're gonna to have to keep throwing these because we don't walk, want to walk into anything that is a piece of bread we don't want that we're looking for something else it will be glowing though now you try and remember where you go because you probably need to retrace your steps we're taking a lot of damage now so we're going to drink this vodka you see how much damage and health we're taking from all of that radiation so we need to move fairly quickly that was there we go that's it so we click in the inventory we drop it in there we're taking a lot of damage we're going to use our other bottle of vodka and then we're going to retrace our steps and get out of here before we die X to run. <sighs> See how much we're, damage we're taking from this. This is because I don't have the more advanced armor. So this is a risk you take with not having that more advanced armor because it has better rad resistance. You notice as soon as I'm out of there, the radiation is dropping quickly. But look at the amount of health I've dropped. This is where all of those med kits or the first aid kits are going to come in handy. You will be very glad you took them. Uh, you can have a look around this little area here, see if there's anything you can pick up. Sometimes there's random items about. You'll notice there is a chest here. This can be used as a stash. Sometimes they have a couple of items in them to start with, but there's nothing there at the moment. So, as you'll notice, we took a lot of radiation damage there. We're going to head back towards the base. Everything is flashing. We're going to use our vodka again to reduce that radiation. We're going to be very drunk very very drunk but it needs to be done and we're going to use a first aid kit because we're losing health rapidly now because of that radiation and that will give us plus three percent which should offset the amount of damage we're taking now this is a brutal game expect to die more than once expect to have to reload saves it's just part of the game um I wouldn't particularly want to play this on Iron Man mode because uh, you'd take so much damage all the time. So we are having a quick look at in our inventory or our PDA, sorry, and there we go. So we can go back and do the training mission and hand it in. We're also healing now. We're a bit woozy because we've just drank a load of vodka, but it's okay. Vodka is really good. It's quite expensive. But there are, you will pick up plenty of anti-radiation pills off bodies and things. There we go. We can have a chat to him. I've got the artifact. He's really happy. He's going to give you a sleeping bag. Which, again, you could have taken at the start, but it really wasn't worth it. You do get one for free, but you're never probably going to use it. And then you say, I'm ready for the challenge. What have you got? And he wants you to find the stash. So... So peace out. Now somewhere in this camp there is a stash. Most stashes that you will get told about, they will give you the exact location. So you will get a little symbol on the map that looks like a white circle with a triangle of bricks in it. Uh, there isn't one on the map right now, but normally that's what you would get. Here he just wants you to explore the village to find the stash. And it could be in any of the buildings. Usually upstairs in the building. What we're going to do is go into this building because I believe that's where it was in my game. So spoilers, I'm afraid you can spend half an hour running around looking for one if you want. But I'm pretty sure it was in here. Let's have a look. We're just going to check this bag here, which is probably what it is. There you go. Personal use. We've opened it. There's nothing in it. Sometimes there is something in it, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, but a lot of the time there isn't. You'll notice a symbol at the bottom left there, a little bottle. That's saying we are thirsty, so we will have to drink something soon. We'll just go back and talk to Fanatic first. Found it. It was empty, though. It was supposed to be, he says. Blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Ask if there's any more work he wants done. He wants you to destroy Mutant Lair. We'll say, I'll do it. Thanks. Bye. That's it. That is now everything we can get off him today. He will get more standard missions, such as going to clear monsters and creatures. Um, but that's the end of the tutorial missions from him. 
If you zoom out, you can see he wants us to go up there and destroy a mutant lair. Now, other stalkers go around the zone, other military go around the zone, etc, etc, etc. Chances are someone else is going to kill that before we get to it. But we can still hand the mission in and he'll pay us for it. So, a little bit cheaty maybe, but it gets you a little bit of cash. If we have a look here, we can see that there is also our important character here and the trader. We'll go and talk to them now. The trader guy was a very important character in the story of the original game. Um, and he's reasonably important here. He will give you quests and things. And obviously he's the first trader you find. If we check our inventory, you can see we haven't actually earned any money from those tutorial missions. But we do have the jellyfish, which we can sell to someone at some point. Someone will want it. And we've got all of our other bits and pieces. We didn't really get a lot from that. But it, it sort of introduces you to the game. But it doesn't tell you to do that. It's a little bit of find your own way, this game. This is Wolf. He has a pretty big gun. And we can say, tell me about yourself. He can tell you all about himself. And then we can ask him for a mission. So um, one of the missions he will give you is a tourist safari. These are really good. They pay about four or 5,000 ruples. And basically you get two guys to go with you to kill some mutants or something quite near this little village. So they're not bad ones to pick up. And most of the time they're terrible shots, but it's better than nothing. And you also click have anything else and he will say rescue the courier in the darkscape north of the bridge. That would be quite brutal to do at this stage. And have anything else? Sorry, I don't. So rescue the courier missions are all right, but it means you have to go and kill whoever is holding them prisoner. They will follow you around after that for a while, but risky business. If you're going to do one, do the two years safari, but we will come back and speak to him. Let's go down and talk to the fella downstairs. So, this is Sidrovish. Sidrovish? Sidrovic? Sidrovich? Sidrovich. That'll do. He will give you missions, he will trade with you, you can have lots of different conversations with him, a pay to buy, you know, hidden routes and things to find other ways to different zones. Lots and lots of options. Uh... You can ask him, have you got information on stashes? But he wants six and a half thousand to tell you where they are. Don't waste your money on that at the minute. You will find loads of stashes. Nearly every mission you hand in will also give you a stash location. And in this game, this gamma mod, stashes are amazing and you will find everything you need in them. So just wait till you find stashes. I will warn you, even in the stashes, most of the items won't be fully repaired so it's not the be on end all but you'll find lots of extra ammo and things like that and all the stuff you'll need for crafting in the game it just takes time but you will get there any work you want done contract killer he wants you to go and kill a bandit in army warehouses that's miles away let's ask if he has anything else he would like you to give him 11 bandit faction patch so as you kill people you will take patches off them because their armor will have patches and you'll basically rip it off the armor and put it in your inventory as you kill them and loot them. So yeah, I'll do that one. I'll keep that on the back burner though because we can do that over time. Uh, any work you want done, he will tell us to kill someone in the Free Stalkers. That's us. I don't really want to upset the Free Stalkers so we'll move on from that. Have anything else? He's got... Something in the wild territory, which again is very far away. I don't really want to do that at the moment. You could take these and then, you know, do them later. But if we click again, he's just got the same ones for us. So we'll leave it at that for now. But if you come back to him, he'll have different stuff. I'm going to also talk to him and uh, see what equipment he has. So there's various, you know, there's a... A knife, but we've already got a knife. The knife we want up from that is a hunting knife, but there's better places to buy that. Uh, and a hunter's kit, which is the same as this bag. Um, but you can just put this in your other backpack and have it in your inventory and not use it. But it will give you increased numbers of body parts obtained from mutants. So possession increases number of body parts. So just having it in your possession is a good thing. 
But again, you can get it cheaper elsewhere. No spoilers other than that, but yeah. You'll also get them free sometimes, perhaps, off mission rewards and things, so... You can buy one, but, uh, you know, it's not urgent. Uh, these backpacks and things, you will notice, have a little green dot under the properties that says usable as stash. So you can put these down and use them as a stash. Now, the beauty of putting down your own stash, rather than using boxes that are around the place, is that you can teleport to them. So if you're moving from one stash location to another, you can teleport to it. It's got a cooldown, but it means that you could be overweight, teleport to it, dump all your stuff in it, and move bases, basically. Because you're starting here, but you might move elsewhere as the game progresses. So just something to bear in mind. If you put down your own, and you, you know you have a spare backpack, use it for that. Now he has various items. Now let's have a look. So... Leadline metal container, he won't be the cheapest person, he's 2250 so they are quite expensive, but it's not too bad. Uh, but we've already got one for free, so we don't need to worry about that at the moment. Uh, field cooking kit, he sells them for 3465 There are, again, vendors that will sell it for cheaper, but you see how much these things cost in-game. Uh, med kits, the first aid kits that we picked up, which we've got a load of still, they cost 3750 And the bandages that we got for free, they cost 1500 each in a single use. The meds that we picked are 1400 nearly 1500 and the fentanyl, 3000 So we have some really expensive gear there that we got for free, basically. So that's why I say meds very important. Water, this is a bit cheaper, it's only a grand for three uses. We took these bottles, which also have three uses, which are worth 2,500. They are slightly better than the purified water in the little canteen. So, are they worth the extra cost? Probably not. I've survived on purified water, which again, there are places you can get it cheaper. You can also buy food. I'm going to give you a little tip on the tinned food and stuff. So I was really frustrated by the fact that if you hover over it, you can see it tells you how much food it gives you, the sighty level, which is 161. And it tells you the price, but it doesn't tell you how many calories per price. So I went through and calculated most of them, at least the ones he has. And I found that overall, the Abakan Beef Tushonka is the best value for money. It gives you the highest amount of calories for each ruple that you pay. So I think that was like four point something ruples per calorie, whereas everything else was pretty much five or above. So if you are going to buy the food, buy the beef chunks. Uh, ammo is also really expensive, so if you can pick it up off bodies, it's very helpful. But like bookshot shells are one of the cheapest at 1000 for 10. You can't see any slugs here, but the slugs are nearer two grand for ten when you actually get them available. All of this stuff here is related to crafting. Um, I don't really recommend buying it. It's very expensive here. It would be sort of an emergency. I really, really, really need to build this item and I cannot find what I need. But you can take these and break them down. And as you disassemble them, you will get other components that you'll need for building. So... Crafting is quite convoluted, and as I say, I'll go into that after, you know, the spoiler warning. But that's the basics. So that's your first vendor. It's your first getting the missions. It's how you get started. And then you sort of just need to go out and explore from there, do missions, explore new areas. You can talk to everyone in this camp, and there is a chance that everyone in this camp will have missions for you. And you can also have companions, so... You know, you can get chatting to them, and if you have a high rating with them, they might offer to be your companion and come with you. You might have to pay some of them and things like that, so do keep that in mind. But you can equip them with weapons, they can carry stuff for you, etc, etc, etc. Or you can play the game on your own. You don't need to do that. Uh, you, everyone will offer to trade, potentially. Some of them will just say, no, I have nothing to trade. This guy actually has nothing to trade but offered to, which is weird. Uh, you can also ask if he wants any work done. So... He would like you to kill this mutant and bring his flesh hide and I'll pay you well. So he will give you money for flesh hide. 
Now, some of these people will pay you a lot for these items, and some of them pay you very little, and it seems to be a little bit random. There are vendors in the game who will pay quite a lot for the body parts that you will pick up off the mutants. However, more often than not, I think that these missions that people will give you will pay more than that vendor will. So it's something to bear in mind. Um, I don't think I have... And I have one piece of flesh hide on me. If I had three, I would just do it and... Uh, you could see how much you get paid. But if you run around the camp, there are plenty of other people. Some people will give you missions, some people won't. He wants a hand watch. You will find things like that. This person wants some vodka times three. No, you're not getting that because I'd want it myself. This guy. Any other work you want done. He wants you to kill someone who's in the military. Freedom are basically NATO. Um... Let's not try and kill any NATO soldiers. Uh, this character here. Uh, this is a character called Hip. She is probably one of the only women in the zone, weirdly. You can talk to her and she will give you a mission to bring her a TOS 194. Uh, sounds like a good deal to me and I'll do it. If you do that, she'll then give you further missions. She's not marked in the game, weirdly, as an important character, but she does seem to have a bit of a mission chain. Uh, so it's worth doing her missions. And she can become a companion and follow you around for a long time and stuff. And she will level up as a companion. You'll notice she's a rookie at the minute, but she will gradually level up as she gains experience. Uh, there are different factions here. So this guy is a member of the Ecologists, which again, you know, they will give you potentially missions. There you go. So he wants you to go find some researchers and they want you to look at irradiated junk and blah, 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 blah. And you say, sure, that's interesting. Where can I find them? And he will tell you to find Prof Kovala in the Great Swamps. And click see you later. Right. So we got a new mission. Spoiler warning at this point. From this point forward... I am going to spoil things. You have been warned. There is now text on the screen. This is the spoiler warning point. First, I'm going to show you about the armor. And then I'm going to hop onto my other character, which has obviously got lots of fancy equipment on him. Probably not the most fancy, but certainly fancier than this guy. And I'm going to spoil some stuff. So, spoiler warning. If you watch past this point, you are no longer exploring on your own. I'm giving you a head start. So, with that said, this is back in the map of the PDA. You will notice that we now have a yellow flashing mission symbol. That's our normal symbol, destroy the mutant lair. We can choose from the task list, list which one we want to appear. So if I click that, you'll see that one's now flashing. But we're going to click this one. And these ones are the ones with locations, okay? So... First thing we're going to do is we need to find Prof Kovalev in the Great Swamps. Now to get the Great Swamps we need to go to this passageway and we will load into the Great Swamps which is down here. Now he is over here in a church building. If I zoom back in and zoom across you will enter here and there are a set of buildings. There may be hostiles there. Do be careful. You will then see that there is this guy here and he will give you a story mission and he will want you to explore this zone. You can go and visit him if you want to pick up the mission, but don't worry about doing his mission straight away. You're going to follow this road here. There is a tower here, a defense tower, a watchtower, which should be home to allied faction called Clear Sky. Keep going down this road and across this bridge. Be careful of anomalies. You will get to this town here. It's a few little buildings. Again, it should be host to clear sky. It should be friendly, but do be careful as you approach. You then follow this path all the way around the side of the area, demarked by a fence. And there will be a break in the fence, which will allow you to walk all the way around and come to here. And that is where you will see this bed symbol. This is actually an entire zone or entire little village 
which is the Clear Sky Base. It is the main base and operating area of Clear Sky. Here you will find a bar to get cheaper food and drink. You will find a guy that is good at equipment and things like that and repair and all of that type of thing. You will find a trader further over this way in one of the buildings. And then up here in one of the buildings, you will also find a guy called Cold. He is the leader of Clear Sky and he will give you story missions. Completing his story missions will get you really good loot. The first story mission you complete, I think, is the one that gives you the first decent armor. And it's fully repaired. It is like a brand new piece of armor. So go to this area. Walk through it, avoiding anything you can. You don't need to get into combat if you can help it. You might have to kill the guys in here. Keep heading this way. You can sleep there if you need to as well. You can make a stash there. There are boxes and things you can use for a stash. You can pick up other missions there, which will pay really well. So the, the bartender will give you really good missions that pay well. So will the trader. Uh, be careful about accepting silly missions where you have to give away toolkits or first aid kits to like the doctor that's there. Because there is also a doctor here, which will have slightly cheaper meds and things and can heal you. So, you know... Once you get there, you are kitted out. You can get fancy armor, you'll get loads of cash for the missions you do. It is a more hostile zone than this starter one, but you can get well kitted out. You will get to a point where the missions become too hard until you've got better gear in terms of weapons, but at least you can try and do the first couple, which will get you that armor for cold. Simple as that. Um... I am going to quickly hit escape and I will save this character uh, and maybe I will play it at a later date but I will just save this game as video character right hi everyone welcome back to stalker gamma mod you are now past seeing my new character and this is the character that I actually play with so if you look at my inventory I've got loads of different stuff so I have repaired a Spaz-12, semi-auto shotty, and I also have an AK-12 monolith upgraded. So this is like advanced stuff. I found a group of five monolith guys walking through the starter zone. They shouldn't really be there, but basically I had a grenade, and there's no way I could have killed them on my own because they are fully kitted out with military gear, but I rolled a grenade under their feet from behind and they obviously didn't realize in time and it killed all of them so grenade super powerful in this and then i took their guns this spaz 12 i got ages ago of someone else but i basically got this ak-12 monolith which takes 5.45 rounds and then realized very quickly that i could also buy an upgrade kit for it which was like 20 or 30 grand so it was expensive, but you will gain money as you progress in the game. And then I fixed it all up. I had to buy some of these parts. I had to repair some of these parts. And then I had to expend repair kits to fully repair both of these items. I still got the Sunrise Stalker suit, but I'm my next job is to get better armor or more fix better armor than I've already found. So... You know, there's loads of guns in this game. Absolutely loads of guns. And I'm just going to demonstrate that by going to... This is my stash. If I go here, can you just see here... All of these guns. You know, you can have machine guns. God help you finding enough ammo for them. You've got various shotguns. You've got various NATO rifles. I've got a G36 there. Um, somewhere I also have the Stalker rifle. But there's various AK-74s. Various different types of pistols, some fancy ones, and, you know, there's my starter gun that I had. At the... Still got it. Various bits of armor and stuff. These are all of the uh, artifacts I found, be it myself or on bodies. I now have eight of these leadline containers. If your artifact is in a stash, it does not need to be in a leadline container. So you can take them out of the leadline container in your inventory and then dump them all in there. And you won't take radiation from it. 
This is my army rifle repair kit, which I built myself, and I'm about to show you how all that works. And there's all the ammo. There's different ammo types you can make yourself. You can break down this ammo and make your own ammo. These are all the parts for various animals and creatures. They're heavy, so I don't carry them all around with me. Uh, these are all items you can use for repairing. They're ones you can strip down for parts. Like these here are those parts, which you might get from stripping this stuff down. And obviously there are various weapons, mods and things like that. These are parts that go in the weapons, such as, you know, locks or slides or gas tubes, etc, etc, etc. You can also get various upgrades for weapons in the form of scopes, etc, etc, etc. Here you'll see I've got various patches in my inventory, I've got the ammo that I use, I've got various food, loads of meds. Now, if I exit out of that and get away from this guy who is talking. This is the farm, by the way, if I just bring up the map. So, I am in the north part of Corden, so the Rookie village is down there. And this is the farm, and I kind of move my base here just because I like the vendors here more, and... You know, you can get a bit everywhere. Um, as I said, spoilers ahead, but uh, this is the destroying the military and seize the machine yard. This is a really, really difficult mission, um, depending on how many military are there. But I tried to do this recently, even with my new gear. I could kill about six of them before they simply surrounded me and overwhelmed me. There were like 12 guys there. So sometimes if you go back, there might be less people. Uh, you might go back and there might only be four, in which case it's a lot easier. But you'll notice I've got missions and these are the these little symbols here. The little triangular ones almost. These are stashes. And the big green ones are more important stashes. Uh, that probably have better gear, supposedly. I've never actually gone to a green stash yet. But there you go, I'm still learning too. But I've got missions all over the place. Um, one of my favourite places still is the swamps because they give really good payouts and obviously you have all the vendors and stuff and the medic down there. I often pay him visits to go and buy all of his medical stuff because it's so much cheaper than everywhere else. If I go to my inventory, what I wanted to show you was tools. So here you'll see a lot of basic tools which is like a tray with orange on top and then you've got advanced tools with a, it is a tray without any sort of cover on top. Now, you can build the advanced tools, you can't build the basic tools, you kind of need to find the basic tools, but you can then build advanced if you want, but it is very difficult. My best advice is to go to stashes. I found all of my basic tools and my advanced tools in stashes. So it's about getting lucky with those stashes. If I right click and click open workbench, you get this screen up. And you'll see there are various other tools you can get. So you can get expert tools, which you can't build. You have to find, but you can build the advanced. But there's expert tools, there's drug making kit, there's gunsmithing tools, which I just recently found. That's like a big find for me because it means I can do even more stuff. And then you can also find an artifact melter. So you can take those artifacts you find and make better ones. That's something that's new to this mod, I understand. So if I click on this here, you can see my inventory and I can click my weapons and then it will show you here all of your, basically your mods or the items, the equipment that are within the gun and the gun's overall health or, you know, how much damage it's taken, how much damage it hasn't taken. Down here, you'll see you need an army rifle kit, which was in my stash and that when you make it will have five uses. And you can use it to repair that from very low. So to repair something from below 50%, you need a kit. If it's over 50%, you can use other items, other repair items, such as gun oil or spray or blah, 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 blah. There's loads of them. You can repair items that way. The same applies that if any of these individual components of a gun are damaged 60% or less so if basically their health is at 60% or more you can still clean them up so to speak with certain items 
If they go below that, you will either need to replace it with one that you find, because you can strip them out of guns. You will either need to replace it with one you find in the gun, or you will have to buy one as a vendor, or a trader, that is 100% health. And that's what I had to do for some of these items. I think this one here, for example, I had to replace with one I bought from a vendor, and that's why it's 100%. But you can also utilize the army rifle and use the army rifle repair kit, sorry. You can utilize that and use one of its charges to completely repair one of these. Almost build it from scratch. But it uses a charge. And once those five charges are gone, that toolkit's gone. So bear that in mind. You can also upgrade items. So if you have a relevant upgrade kit, you can upgrade your armor you can upgrade your mask you can upgrade your guns and all the different guns will have different upgrade options so you know you can increase its fire rate you can increase the reliability you can increase the reliability of particular components you can reduce its weight etc etc uh, you can do various different things recoil reduction handling improvement you know and it goes up and up and up and does better stuff this is a heavily modded gun, that's what it originally looked like. And I've heavily, heavily changed it. So this is already upgraded with loads of kit. It's got a laser sight on it, it's got a four time scope on it, it's got the you know the capability of an underbarrel grenade launcher on it. It's got the works basically. And that's all from an upgrade kit. But you can still do further upgrades. Then you also have the manufacturing. So these are your known recipes and guides, yada, yada, yada. I think you just get access to everything. I'm not sure if there's stuff you can find. Don't quote me on that, though. But here you can say I can craft devices so I can make my own lead line container. If I click on that, it tells me all the components I need. And honestly, a lot of this stuff needs a lot of components. But you'll notice down here, to craft it, you require basic tools. For other things, for example advanced night vision you need advanced tools so you get a basic headlamp which can be upgraded into basic night vision you'll notice you need the headlamp down there and you need various other items which you can get from breaking down old radios and things and that needs basic but then once you go on to the more advanced night vision you need the lower night vision and you also need advanced tools so and then i imagine this needs expert tools here so there you go if we go to equipment, you can see you can craft various types of bags and things, which add to your combat, you know, you know your weight capabilities. You can also craft uh, reactors for stuff. Field cooking kits, which don't need too much to make. You need some cutlery and some metallic scraps. Basically, you can make a lot of the stuff you would need in the game. You can make your toolkit, so this is where you can make your advanced tools, you can make weapon cleaning kits, you can make all of the, you know, exoskeleton repair kit, that's again a spoiler, you will find exoskeletons in the game that allow you to carry more. Uh, you can get heavy weapon, heavy armor kits, you can make the army rifle kit, historic weapon cleaning kit, advanced weapon repair kit, yada yada yada, medium kits for armor. You get all the other advanced tools here, which allow you to repair bits that are, you know, above condition level 60% or 40% or 85%. They all have different requirements, but you'll get used to it. You just have to look through them all. You can do upgrade parts. You can do medical equipment. You can do ammo. You can even get RPG launchers. So, you know, they, they do exist in the game is my understanding. Then you got all your artifacts, and you got artifacts and containers, so you, you've got loads of fancy stuff you can make. But here you do need artifacts melter. God knows where you get that. I don't, I don't see it in there, put it that way. Quick run through of crafting. But yeah, there's a lot in this game. There's a lot of the map to explore. If I bring up the PDA again and just zoom right out, you'll see that I've had a look in this area. I've had a look in this area. And I've ventured into this area. I haven't gone in here yet, and I've got loads of stuff to do in there. I haven't gone. I've gone in here and got my ass kicked in the meadows. Uh, I haven't been in this area, but I have a few things to do in there. But look all the way up here. Look at how big this map is. It goes all the way up to the reactor. 
So that's the uh, Chernobyl nuclear power plant. That's Pipriot there. So there's a massive area to go through. And I've explored just a tiny proportion portion of it. And there is story missions to follow to some extent. But it's, you know, it's it's a long involved game. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I feel like I'm, I'm achieving stuff slowly. But I, uh, I hope this was helpful for getting you started in the game. And, you know... If you looked at the spoilers, hopefully it hasn't been too spoilery, but it's stuff that the game doesn't necessarily explain very well. But hopefully that has helped explain it a bit and you can get a head start in the game. Especially if you're new to the franchise, which I pretty much was. But thanks for watching everyone. Please do like, share and subscribe. If obviously there's quite a lot of interest in this video for... The Stalker Gamma mod. I'll do other videos and go into a bit more detail on things. Obviously, I know it's not the usual for my channel, but I do like to venture out and cover lots of different types of games. But thanks for watching again, everyone. Comments below if you enjoyed it. Please do hit that like button as well. Have a great week.